So, for Negroes going over there and they could be around white folks and the white folks was happy to see on them and wasn't, it wasn't nothing. French had lost a whole generation. So all the young men, the soldiers was there and they said, boy, this is something else. That's why the white folks had a song, but it was for niggas. How you going to keep them down on the farm after they seen Paris? That was a famous song from those. How you going to keep them down on the farm? How you going to keep them niggas down on the farm? They was pretending like it was for white folks. It wasn't for white No, 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 no. How you going to keep them niggas in Mississippi, in Alabama? And they've been over there, over there. They've been over there, right? And the white folks then treated them over there like saviors, like normal people. You know, you go to a place, they just run in the kitchen. That's the way it was in Denmark. In Copenhagen, when I first got there, I was coming from Africa and I got there. And the, the white woman was chasing me. The white, one, one white woman would bet the other white woman. Nice looking white lady. I bet you I can catch him. I didn't know she told me that after she caught me, of course. Say, no, I mean that was she was betting, you know, like you said, me and you there in the club, you said, man, I bet you I can knock that child over there, right? Man, you ain't gonna get the first base. Then I have to pay up. So I, I didn't, I wasn't even off the plane. I just happened to walk in the club, and I was where all the niggas go. Anyway, and I said, man, what are they doing here? They used to, let me tell you how they lived up there. They used to take a bowl, because they'd pass the bowl around. They have a bowl, regular soup bowl, punch, put tin foil on the top of it, punch a few holes in it. They put a hash on this side, and what's the name? And of course, everything I knew, it was all illegal. It says, you know, illegal here. It was in uh, all of the places up there in Northern Europe, in Amsterdam, in Holland, they had, they, they liked niggas. The music they listened to was nigger music. No, they listened, they didn't listen to the white folks' music. Mm -mm. You'd have to be a strange white folks. Maybe in England they listened to a couple of Beatles or something, you know, but they, everybody else, they loved jazz. They, oh, the blues. You talking about that old, I think I had three friends in LA, two friends, both of them women. And uh, we was friends. I might have showed y'all some pictures. We was the only ones. We almost had to sleep, sneak and listen to that old country boo, Lightning Hopkins, Jimmy Reed, Howlin' Wolf. No people our age listened to it. And we liked it. I had two girlfriends, not sexual friends, but that's what we would do. When I'd go down to L.A., We'd hang out, and that's all we listened to, because like, you couldn't listen to it if you brought that stuff out. And the temptations and all that is moving, and you bring out that old country blues. One of my friends is a lady. She went to a program uh, with, uh, not Howlin' Wolf, but uh, I'll tell you his name in a minute. She say, it was nobody. Only people there was white folks. Well, that's for a long time it's been happening like that, you know. In other words, the culture we leave behind, they pick it up because they see more in it than, you know, than what we do. And that's with everything. I'm telling you, if we get enough Negroes, right here, ready to do right, the white folks will be happy to go along with the program, whether they told to or not. How many was it, the white folks right there? All of them wasn't the police that went to all them demonstrations? Now all the niggas was. The 
black people. What I mean is you can tell how if we was out there filming, they wouldn't come to us and ask nothing because they already didn't been tipped off. But they put the word out and them, the white folks came like it's a happening. Like this is what's happening. Okay, so if they were to ask about racism in America, I would say institutional racism, but not human to human racism. The other thing is racism. What, what are you going to do? What's the largest class of people that are being born right now today and been in a mixed race? Have you seen the color of Negroes? Okay, think I'm lying. Look at some of the old pictures of black people in slavery. During Lincoln's time, we were tar babies. Black, 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 right? Look at niggas now. You can't find one. The lady thought, I, I'm going I'm to go on and tell it. I was at Starbucks over there. I probably told you all before, so... I was going in, and I, uh, it was a lady on a computer in a car. And I looked, and I said, uh, I walked up to her. I said, Sister, I'm not hitting on you. I'm just telling you. You're the beautifulest person and the blackest. She was black. You know that blue black they have? Blue black. I say, and I was talking to her like a historian. I was saying a long time ago, it was a lot of people like you. We always called them blue. Right? In a neighborhood, even when you was young, somebody was called blue, right? Black, there's nothing darker than black but blue. Blue is darker. At least on his own niggas. And I told her, and she was so beautiful as a shame. I said, I, I told her, cause, you know, I'm a, I didn't say I'm a Muslim and I, I can't hit on girls or nothing. But I just told her. She looked at me and she was surprised, shocked, and kind of, at first, is this nigga making fun of me or is. And then she realized he's real. He actually, because I'm saying, hey, when I was young, it was a lot of people like you in our neighborhood. And da 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 da. And she was definitely not uncomfortable, but you know, when you, you know, this is really something, this is really happening. And I told her, I said, no, because, see, women that black, they either going to get a lot of attention or none at all. You know what I mean? Because she just was, evidently, in, in the, anyway, now that's what we up against. We up against a world that have Visions of who we are. Okay. I done told you all about some of the trips I would take when I was in Columbia. I'm working out and Mr. Columbia comes over and and uh, shakes my hand and I do it. Just a regular handshake. No, Shaft didn't do it like that. The Shaft didn't do it like that. And I was saying to myself, all that old wiggly round stuff that niggas do, they used to do in those days, the Vietnam people. I said, man, so he was actually, you know, saying that that's not real colored stuff, what you just did. I said, man, you must be crazy. And then they went on to... After there was a few of them there, and I was right in the middle of my workout, would you uh, sing us a little song? So I didn't tell them that I was a dope dealer, because they already knew. I, what else reason I was going to be in 
Bogota, Colombia for all that time. And, you know, I ain't got no job, ain't that, no, you know, so. I kind of let them know that I'm kind of like a gangster, you know what I mean? That's kind of what I do. And I don't sing. You know, in fact, I don't dance even at parties. I don't do no, so the squares be out there dancing, you know, squares, people with the school and stuff. I say, gangsters don't, uh, you know, they sit back, get a spot, and they just be, you know, talking or what have you, right? But you don't see no real gangster-type Negroes out there dancing, at least not in the old days, you know. The squares, you know, the common people, they dance. I see the niggas out there dancing, you know. Anyway... So I'm going to get back to, uh, to our mission and what we nobody wanted uh, nobody wanted this title, and that's fine. So we're claiming a title, and we want to live up to it. We have to harness the, the ability of our people, not our people, the people. The, I don't, we don't have to repeat this over and over, but the people are being misled so bad, it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And it ain't no big deal. If I, My belief is this. We got to get busy right now. The period that we did before where we was kind of taking it easy, that was, my belief is that was a rest period before this serious work period. We have to harmonize literally every group of people in the United States. We have to harmonize the movie stars and the movie producers to make movies about the new people that we want to see existing in this time. Problem solvers. We want them to make movies about what's happening now, but the problem is solved. It'll be the same like... Uh, when we was kids, we every Saturday they had little shows at the movie. So you go there, and every it was the same. Whatever the bad guys was, they, they, they did this, they did that, and then at the end it was a big chase. And everybody, you remember those days? You might remember a corner of that. Everybody riding. Every one of them was like that. So every movie was basically the same. We have to, and, and, and this is all possible. It's just that there's no, there's no focused element to harmonize all of those people. That's why we're mentioning uh, governmental cooperation. If not cooperation, just do a few, spin a few tops and go about your business. Because we don't believe it's enough time to go through all of these steps to get to where we need to go. Because it don't seem like it's that much time left. Because if you look at the way things are accelerating, and remember... Going downhill, acceleration picks up. That's why the police is never at the top of the hill on the highway. They're always down at the bottom of the hill. Because it's going to pick up speed, the weight, the momentum. Okay. 
So we have to harmonize our activity with the people who are making movies. All of them, we have to convince as many as we can. We have to talk to them about their power and their ability, and I believe most of them would be happy to do it. Because you see, when you see these movie stars now, they're talking about these subjects, you know. Or they might say, I really like that Michael Moore, da-da-da-da-da, and then they go to something else. But they're letting you know that, and then remember, most of the people in Hollywood, one thing they've had a chance is to live the fantasy and every one of them got a psychiatrist. Every one of them is half crazy, right? And they want to get back to reality.